Joining me now, the IGFA Conservation Director, Jason Schratweiser. Jason, you broke the big news on Friday. After 77 years and seven months, a new world record largemouth bass has been verified by the IGFA. Can you please give us some more details? Absolutely. This is a, a record that's been on a lot of people's radar for a while now. Uh, Mr. Manabu Karita caught this fish on July 2nd of last year. And we received his application on the 15th of, or excuse me, the 19th of, of September. And it's taken us quite a bit of time to get all the necessary information to document it and determine whether or not um, it met IGFA criteria. But after a considerable investigation, it sure does. And we now have a tie for the all tackle record for largemouth bass at 22 pounds, 4 ounces. Now, it turned into a lengthy process, taking nearly six months to verify this world record catch. Take us through what that entailed. Well, a, a number of things, actually. Um, we worked very closely with our sister organization, Japan Game Fish Association. They actually um, compile and send us all record applications that come from Japan. Uh, they compile the applications, they translate them for us, and they contact the angler if there's any additional information that's needed. And we spent a considerable amount of time going back and forth through JGFA to get more information from the angler, including some additional affidavits on whether or not uh, the area in question where he was fishing was indeed a no fishing zone. And ultimately, at the end, they helped us uh, put together a polygraph test as well. Is that normal practice for verifying a world record? Uh, we say that we have the right to employ various uh, verification procedures for any world record, and, and that's uh, explicitly uh, written on our world record application. But we thought it was the best case uh, for not only IGFA, uh, but also the angler for this particular record if he in, did indeed take a uh, polygraph test. Um, as you know, the all-tackle largemouth bass is a record that's uh, got a lot of uh, history behind it. It's very iconic and uh, sometimes quite contentious. And, you know, we have actually been sued in the past, never successfully, but uh, people have sued us over bass records before. So we thought it was in our best um, interest to go ahead and, and request a polygraph test, not only for us, but for uh, the angler, because, you know, once you take a polygraph and, and pass it, it generally removes all doubt from people's mind whether or not something's um, legitimate or not. And he, to his credit, he agreed to take it right away and pass the thing with flying colors. How tough of a job is it to be the holder of the world record information? You must get hundreds of claims, and I guess some people filing false claims. Well, we typically get around um, 800 to 1,000 record applications for a year, uh, each year, and I think generally um, it's a fairly small percentage. I think less than 15% get declined for one reason or another. And we don't see a lot of applications, I think, where people are uh, intentionally falsifying anything. Um, more often than not, things get declined because the line doesn't test correctly or they might have um, fished with tackle that's not compliant with IGFA angling rules or something like that. Talk to me about how comprehensive the IGFA is with its world record keeping. This is the way the process works. As soon as the uh, record comes in, it's date stamped and it goes to our world record coordinator who enters all the information into uh, a database. We have a database that currently, I think, has roughly 29,000 records in it. Um, if it's a line class sample or a fly tippet sample, that um, uh, line material is tested to see where it breaks at. Then um, Becky, our coordinator, will compile all this information and put it in a, in a um, jacket or envelope. She puts her comments on it, whether or not she thinks it passes IGFA muster. And then it goes to me. I verify the species identity, which in the case of a largemouth bass isn't too difficult, but we get record applications from around the world. I also look at it to make sure that everything's compliant, and then I pass it on to the president. He does the same thing. Now, if we're all three in agreement that a record either passes or does not, that it, it is either approved or rejected. However, if we're not in agreement, we meet and discuss it more. If we can come to a consensus, then great. If not, we elevate uh, the matter to an executive committee. The 2010 edition of the IGFA World Record Game Fish book was released this month. Where can people go to get the book and more information on the IGFA? Uh, it's really easy. You can go to our website, www.igfa.org. 
you can sign up to be a member there. The book is um, a membership benefit and uh, comes, comes with a one-year membership. Please send along our congratulations to Mr. Corita on his world record catch. I will. Thank you very much. One more IGFA world record update for you. The facts have been checked, and it is confirmed. Thomas Healy is a world record holder. The 66-year-old Rockford, Michigan man was fishing in the Big Manistee River in September of 2009 when his 41-pound, 7-ounce brown trout took the line. The record surpasses the 1992 brown trout caught in Little Red River, Arkansas, and smashes the state record by more than 5 pounds. The fish is currently waiting uh, to be worked on by a yet-to-determined uh, taxidermist. Congratulations, Thomas, on the once-in-a-lifetime catch.